Um, yeah, so we're going to do a few things standing. I, I kicked my tennis ball out of the way, so no need for the tennis ball. And standing with the feet parallel outside edges in a straight line of the feet, so maybe a little pigeon toe. I'm going to bend my knees a few times just to relax through the legs, try to bring the weight in the heels. Think of the thighs rolling out with that energy coming up, feel it activate your lower transversus abdominis just by standing in that way, allowing the outer hip to do the work of holding you. And uh, toes separated and heels apart, but um, think of rocking back and forth activating here yeah rocking forward and back not lifting the feet off the ground just keeping the foot flat and trying to keep engaging here and not in the quads or butt and then go ahead and take that into a lift so roll up onto your toes and then gently roll back down You can take the arms up if you want and back down or keep them at your hips, either way. So you can involve as much movement as you want. And keep doing it. Think of relaxing through the quads and activating through the calves and outer hip. And see if that changes it a little for you or if you're able to relax the quad. Kind of hard, they want to get it. It is hard, you want to go back to it because it's a big muscle and it wants to do the work. Yeah, and it needs to do a little work, it's supporting us. But just getting as much back line of the body activated as we can here, hamstrings, calves, outer hip flexors. Nice, shake that out a little bit. Kind of warm up the hips a little bit. So we do really do a little standing sit down. But I want us to keep our feet parallel this time. Instead of sitting down standing without hands, you can have the arms here, kind of box arms. And you're pushing down with one and pushing up with the other to really activate the mid back. And just little squats here. Spine straight, feet in that same alignment. Trying not to get the knees out over the toes. So just a little bit of a squat. Warming up the legs a little bit and the outer hip. And then let's do a little squat lift. So squatting with one leg, lifting the other knee up to the elbow. A little bit of how many things can you do at one time? Not many. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I'm not chewing gum, I'd be done. I know. Now start chewing your gum. <laughs> Crossing your teeth. <laughs> French braiding your hair. Yeah, well, that would be even more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Shake that out a little bit. And then let's take the feet to a Pilates V this time. We're going to do a standing roll down. So heels together, toes apart, zipping up the inner thighs, working all of the glutes this time. So standing there, engage the transversus, feel everything drawing in, ribs drawing down. Let the neck just kind of roll side to side for a moment. Just loosen up through the neck and shoulders. Maybe shrug the shoulders a few times. We're just beginning to begin a standing roll down. So you're imagining that you're rolling away from a wall, like there's a wall 
all along your spine and you're peeling off of it vertebrae by vertebrae. Blah, blah. So you start by allowing the sternum to fall back as the chin comes towards the chest. So just do that a few times. Warming up the upper spine. It's from like the mid back up. Feel how the mid back is involved with everything that the head and neck do. And then starting from the top, we're going to peel down a little lower this time to mid back. Waking the backs up and then roll back up bone by bone. Think of each vertebrae moving. Think of lifting and you're coming up and over a beach ball or railing, something imagining that. Rolling back up and then roll down. Think of coming up to go over. Maybe come so that you're just kind of hanging like a rag doll. Let the arms hang. Think of the upper back really reaching up to the ceiling. Get a stretch through the spine. And then roll it back up one bone at a time. And let's do that a few more times. So taking a deep inhale, pushing down through the feet, chin to chest, drop the sternum, peel it down. Nice. Shake the shoulders out. Push down through the heels again. Stack back up. Really think of tucking the pelvis under you as you roll back up. I feel like my spine's a little cold this morning. Let's do it two more times. Take a deep inhale, exhale, roll it down. Do you take these classes? Yes. Awesome. So you're a little warmed up. Good. Yeah, we are. This feels good though. Yeah, nice keeping the spine round. Instead of just hinging from the hips, you've probably just done a lot of hinging from the hips. Inhale, exhale, really tuck the pelvis as you round up. Nice. Shake it out a little bit. We're going to do one more just to come down to the mat. So taking a deep inhale, exhale, tucking the chin, really working this time to peel one at a time, making it your best one yet. Hinge from the hips once you get rolled down. Send the tailbone up to where the wall meets the ceiling behind you. Bend the knees if you need to. And then just step it on down. Come to hands and knees. So spreading the fingers wide. Go ahead and engage the transversus. So feel like you're pulling your hip bones apart, your navel, the spine, your ribs drawing down and together and reach the sit bones out behind you. Take a minute to check in and then start from the tailbone. Allow the belly to drop. Inhale, come up into that cow. But again, keeping the navel engaged so it's not your full cat cow because it's restricted by the transversus engagement. Starting with the tailbone round and under. Coming into your angry cat and just move a few times and really try to work on one bone moving at a time. So getting as much spinal movement as you can. Making that the focus of it. And 
So come back to neutral when you get there and start from the head a few times. So I'm gonna lift my head first, open through the collarbones, then let the tailbone drift up. And then tuck the head first. Just see if it feels like there's any difference between starting with the head and starting with the tailbone. I feel like my head and neck stay in a little better alignment when I start there. And then uh, as you finish up there, check in with the fingers, make sure they're engaged, the thumbs are reaching towards one another. And send the um, elbow creases forward. Think of externally rotating that upper arm, upper arms, elbows slightly bent, navel to spine, and just work on those rhomboid presses. So right between the shoulder blades, we're raising that to the ceiling. The sit bones are reaching straight behind us, so the tailbone's not moving. The spine is not flexing anymore as in cat-cow. You're just working the back side of the body. Yeah, a few more of those. Good, I see it working. Nice, and then stretch it back. Find the child's place, pose real quick. And shake side to side. Shake the hips out a little bit. Just kind of rolling from one side to the other. All right, and then come lying on your back. Feet flat on the mat, knees, knees to the ceiling. Think of lining your feet like we did with the outside edges. Engage through the transversus. Feel like you're peeling your hip bones apart, ribs drawing down. And do some pelvic tilts. Drop the belly and the low back flat with the mat. And then the tailbone. Letting space develop between the low back and the floor. And this is where you can really focus on that lumbar spine moving. Especially if you find yourself sitting more than normal now or just routine change. Good. Yeah, the hips being stiff. Just getting that lumbar spine moving is really important. So just keep going with these tilts. And then come to neutral spine, neutral pelvis. So you feel like your ASIS bones and your pubic bone are at the same level. And start by then dropping left to right without letting the knees move, just moving the pelvis. Using your transversus, pelvic floor muscles, hip flexors. Maybe going in a circle a couple of times thinking of our pelvic clock, going all the way around the clock in each direction. And then just place your hands by your mat, re-engage, drawing the ribs down. And let's just do a little stretching with knees side to side. So keep the core engaged, keep drawing the ribs down and together. And let the hips just kind of swing. Try to control the abs, but just let the hips move. 
So one hip can lift up off the mat and then the other. Just trying to wake them up a little bit, get them moving. Release some of the stiffness. And then take your feet wider, wide as your mat. And go a little slower with it, but still just kind of let them swing. So even doing a lot of Pilates lately and yoga, still feel like there's a little stiffness in the hips. Just a lot of stress going on right now, obviously. Mm. So just- Yeah, there is. <laughs> So I found myself, I don't know about y'all, I found myself just getting stiff, like my muscles were stiffening up from the exercise, they were stiffening up from the stress and tension. And yeah, my whole body was stiff. Yeah, that's what I found yesterday too. I did like a really flowing yoga class where I just kind of let my body flow and move. And there's ways we can bring that into Pilates too. A lot of time it's we're so like straining, working on the core, but it's really about movement and getting the joints moving. So feet flat, hip width apart again. Let's just take a figure four stretch real quick. So right ankle to left knee. And for this one, make sure the hips stay level. So the hips are level with the floor. Get a little stretch there. And you can feel it in the outer right hip. To find it, keep exploring with it. You can lift the left leg, keeping uh, both ankles flexed and not letting your hips sway to either side. Really keep the hips level. And that usually makes the stretch a little more intense, really gets it more where we need it to be, even if it feels not super intense. And you can straighten and bend the left leg if it's up towards the ceiling. Get the leg moving out a little bit. The core is still engaged. The core is helping do the work of the bending and straightening of the leg, yeah. So just a few more here. Yeah, nice. You're really pushing that left heel up to the ceiling. And then bend it in, thread the needle, and pull the legs towards you now. You can take the elbows out to the sides and involve the mid-back a little bit. One more deep breath, make sure the hips are still level. And then drop the left knee down the right foot down, and shake it out side to side again a little bit, a little windshield wiper. And then let's switch sides. So re-engage through the core, left ankle comes up onto the right knee. And just hold it there a second with the hips level. Check in with the stretch that's happening, make sure the left ankle's flexed. And my spine is neutral, so I have a little bit of arch in my low back. If that hurts your low back, you can kind of press it down. That's just gonna take your pelvis out of neutral. And then beginning to lift that right leg up, flex through both ankles, and just hold there a second. Core engaged to support you. 
Kind of making it an active stretch, especially if you're in that neutral pelvis, neutral spine. And then ankles still flexed. You can straighten, pushing the right heel to the ceiling and bend to that 90 degree tabletop. And we'll just do a few of those. Feels good to get that knee and hip working a little bit. more. And then bend the knee back to that 90 degrees, that right knee, thread the needle, and pull the legs in. But try to keep your tailbone reaching down. Try to keep your hips level. Don't rock side to side. Bend the elbows a little bit to involve the mid-back. Take a few breaths. Nice, then lower that leg down. Again, windshield wipers side to side. And then letting the knees come back to the ceiling, hands by your sides, core engaged. We're going to move into a little bridge work. So just starting with the pelvic tilt. As you exhale, we're going to tilt back into the 12 o'clock position, navel to spine, flat back, and then begin to peel one bone at a time up and off the floor, coming up into your bridge, making sure the ribs are drawing down and together. You're one long line out through the knees that are reaching away from you. Deep inhale. And then as you exhale, drop the sternum first, feel the upper back and then mid-back, melt into the mat. Really focus where the ribs and lumbar spine start and go one bone at a time, really trying to press that lumbar spine down. Inhaling at the bottom, exhaling to curl it up. And focus on your stiff points, maybe go back and forth a little bit, try to get some movement throughout the spinal column. Notice where parts want to move really well and some parts don't. Inhaling at the top, exhaling, roll down. So play around with that a couple more times at your pace, moving with your breath. Exhaling as you move the spine. And as you do a few, notice how we squeeze the butt, we squeeze the quads, and that's great. They're really supporting us and strengthening in the movement. But let's do a couple focusing on that hip flexors. So do a couple trying to relax through the quads and butt and use the outer hips. See if you can feel that engagement. exploring the way the body moves, working its right kind of in that dimple where you want to try to feel it. And then bridge up, hold your bridge if you can, feel nice and supported. If it's safe for you, you can bend the right knee into the chest, send it to the ceiling, trying to keep the hips level, or just hold your bridge. You can lower lift the leg. 
bending the knee back into the chest, setting the foot down, leveling up the hips, roll down. Then we're gonna roll back up on your exhale. Again, holding that bridge. If you want, moving into the left leg, bending the knee, straightening the leg out, lower lift three times. Keeping the hips level. And bending that knee into the chest, leveling off the hips before you lower down bone by bone. Nice. And rock that side to side. And let's roll onto our bellies. Start warming up the back a little bit again. Hands are gonna be in that diamond shape under your forehead. Feet are pressing down into the mat. Shoulder blades are reaching down the back and the pubic bone tucks into the mat. Notice how that'll lengthen out through the low back. We're gonna push the hands away like we're trying to push the top part of our yoga mat away from us to engage the mid back and then inhale raising head neck and shoulder exhale roll down it's like you're pushing a marble away from you as you lift and using your nose you're rolling it back to you as you lower and try to keep the shoulders really going down the back And just experimenting with how high you go. Making sure the pubic bone's pushing down. Lower the head down. This time take the head with your, um, or take the hands with your head. So it's inhale, lifting arms. Exhaling, lower. Push the pubic bone into the mat, push the tops of the feet into the mat, feel the back line of the body working. Doing up to six or so there and then stretch back, find your child's pose. <sighs> Oh, that's really hard. <laughs> Feeling it today? I got lazy over the tornado. <laughs> I know. We've all struggled. <laughs> it's like Monday for sure nobody was in the mood to. No. Well, we didn't have any power until yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you got power finally. Yes, it is. I, I can't even tell you because there's still a lot of people that don't have it. Oh man, it's so hard. So um, come line onto your right side. If you have a blanket or anything, yoga block, you can put it under your head or just use your right arm. So whatever you've got. Did we do last time you were with me? Did we do some hip work? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think we've gotten to do this series yet. So um, start with your back in alignment with the back of your mat. Shoulders are stacked, hips are stacked. And then once you get there, the core is engaging. You're lifting um, the lower body off of the mat, or at least, you know, in theory, you're engaging and not just dumping down into the mat. Feet are bent, uh, knees are bent 90 degrees. So that tabletop position, and then you're taking the ankles back so that they're alignment with your, in alignment with your hips and shoulders. And then we're gonna externally rotate from the hips. So it creates that kind of diamond shape with your feet. So we're gonna do some clams here, opening up that top leg. So the core is engaged. Keeping that side off of the mat, right? What's that? 
keeping your side off of the mat. In other words, lifting up uh, in your waist. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. yeah. Keeping that core engagement and neutral spine. That's keeping your spine neutral. So working that outer hip area. A couple more here. And then heels touch and then knees touch. So just alternating heels, knee. Yeah, and just checking in and make sure your ribs are drawing together. You're not losing that core engagement. That's your core engagement, Joe. <laughs> just making faces. Is he starting to make faces? Yes. Oh, we still got three more exercises here. So, <laughs> knee is in alignment with the hip now, lifted. Same 90 degree bend. We're going to take the knee back and forward. Top of the foot is parallel with the ceiling, so it's level. The upper body is engaged, so it's not moving. It's able to stay absolutely still. It's not rocking forward or back. So a little bit more hip flexor here. Two more. And then straighten the leg, reach out through the heel, straight leg, same thing, send it forward and back. Notice the top of my foot there, it's parallel. It's not here, but here. I think I was in Chicago or something, I'm so cold. My <laughs> <laughs> sweatshirt socks. I was cold this morning, but it <laughs> warmed us up. We have our air conditioner on and fans were on. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and all right, then from there, foot still parallel, we're going to bend the knee into chest and then send it out long. So last one here. Wow. I know it. <laughs> it worked. Oh my goodness. Oh. That's why we got the hips moving first thing. Couple more. Woo -wee. And lower down, shake it out, pat it out. Roll back onto your belly. Rock the hips side to side a minute. Let that hip release. You big bone to mat. Engage the navel. Keep the hands as wide as you need to. So like superwoman arms out in a Y in front of you. We're gonna do um, a little bit of swan work. So forehead is on the mat. And you're pushing the tops of the feet down into the mat, lengthening out, feel the kneecaps lift with the back of the legs engaging, quads engaging. We're gonna inhale, raise head, neck, and shoulders. And so like your cobra for yoga, we call it swan and Pilates. And then just lowering back down, forehead back down to the mat. Inhaling to raise up to your comfort level, exhaling to lower. And you can swan dive here if you want, which is a little bit of lifting the feet, allowing the body to roll down, the legs to lift. And it's a little bit of catching yourself and just rocking. So you can explore that if you want to or skip it. Oh. Find a child's pose. Shake the hips out. Mm. 
Nice. And then we got to do the left hip or the right hip. So lying onto your left side. Crawling in alignment with the back of your mat, shoulders, hips stacked. Arm or any kind of prop as a pillow. Legs are bent 90 degrees. Engage through the core. Draw the ribs together. Feel the lower ribs, your left side ribs, float up off the mat. Then send the ankles back so that they're in alignment with hips, shoulders. <coughs> Don't let your upper uh, hip roll back here. Make sure it stays in alignment. Externally rotating through the thighs, creating that V feet. And then a little bit of clam. Heels stay together, knees come and touch. We'll see how this side feels. Really good exercises for stabling the hips. Two more. And then heels touch, knees touch. Keep drawing the ribs down and together. Make sure the ribs don't start flaring. Joe's thinking I could be anywhere else right now. <laughs> I don't yes. know where, where. Where would you be, Joe? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Outside, shoveling coal. I'd rather be shoveling coal. Anywhere. <laughs> and then knee and leg parallel with the hip here. That 90 degree bend in the knee, sending it forward and back. Top of the foot level, ankle flexed. Keep the core engaged. There's nowhere I'd rather be with y'all than with y'all. <laughs> oh, us too. Me too. <laughs> no, it has been so great to stay connected. It is. And what else you got to do? I mean, you yeah. know, life's kind of boring right now. It is. Got to have entertainment, no matter how painful. And you got to move your body. Yeah, straight leg now. Reaching out through the heel. Yeah, for sure, gotta keep the body moving. Top of the foot parallel. Two more. How's this leg feel? My right leg definitely feels better. Yeah, <laughs> mine too. This is, uh, but it's starting to talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Bend and press now. In towards the chest and then pushing that heel away and a little bit back maybe, a little bit behind the body as it pushes back. Oh, I feel this one. <laughs> After all that is. Keep drawing the ribs down and together. Four more. Two. And one more. Lower the leg down, shake it out. Add it out, good work. Oh, and then let's push up, let's come to kneeling. And let's get the spine moving a little more. So really working on that uh, spinal articulation today. Get my prop out of the way. So pushing down through the knees, allowing the hips to come forward and that lower transversus to engage. You can keep the feet hip width, or you can bring heels together, toes apart, if that helps you feel more stable. 
And then engaging through the core, we're gonna do that roll down that we did standing, only from kneeling. So chin knots towards chest, sternum begins to push back, shoulders are just relaxed. Roll it down bone by bone, trying to keep the hips as far forward as you can until the last minute, then let the hips shift back, come down into like a puppy pose, stretch it out, spine straight, and then begin to lift, tuck the pelvis under, lift the hips back up, begin to let the arms roll towards you, shift the hips forward, stack it back up straight. Yeah, relax the shoulders down. We call this one a cat stretch. So inhaling, exhale, chin to chest. Begin to peel the upper body down. Keep the hips forward as long as you can. Keep rounding the spine like it's going up and over a beach ball. And then shift the sit bones back. Find your straight spine, stretch it forward, kind of like puppy pose. Little stretch through the shoulders. Tuck the pelvis under. Shift the hips back forward. Allow the hands to drift back in. Really push the hips forward. Roll back up through the spine. And let's just do that one more time. Inhaling, exhale, chin to chest. Let the sternum fall back. Make sure the shoulders are relaxed up and under or feel like your yeah your navel is up and under your ribs stretch it out making sure you're not hyper extending the low back here where you're really arching the back but looking for a straight spine and then begin to let the fingers drift back towards the body Tuck the pelvis under, shift the hips far forward as you can. Roll it up bone by bone. Nice. Shake it out a little bit. I'm going to move a little forward just so I don't go back out of the frame. So the hips again are shifting forward. You may want to bring the heels together, heels touching this time helps to activate the glutes. We're gonna let the glutes support us for this one. So arms by our sides or up into that box arms, either way. We're just gonna shift the weight back. So your core is engaged, your ribs are drawn down. You're gonna shift back as one long line and then inhale back forward. So you're controlling how far back you go. Don't let your back arch. We're not looking for bow pose here, straight spine. So a nice thigh stretch. Yeah, nice. Looks good. I'm gonna try, I've done a couple with the heels touching. I'm gonna try to separate the heels. Changes the movement a little bit, makes it a little harder. And then shake it out, loosen that up. Sit back on the feet, stretch out the toes a second. Moving my little pinky toes out of the way. Get a little stretch, inhale the arms up. And let's just add a little side bending to this. So dropping over to the right side. You're staying in one plane here. So it's kind of like you're squeezed between two planes of glass. Inhaling up. Exhale over to the left. And I'm twisting a little bit, so don't be like me. <laughs> no twisting, just side bending. <laughs> One more each side. Yeah, trying to let the shoulders go down the back. Just moving with your breath. I'm just going to send a little breath here into my left side. I don't know about y'all. 
voice seems like it needs a little more. <laughs> so we're going to come kneeling now again. We're going to do a little side kneeling work to add to what we just did on the mat. So left arm is going to come down under the shoulder. Right leg out. Take a minute to send the right arm up. Find a little stretch here. Maybe a little side bending. And then bring the right hand behind the head. Activate through the core, drawing the ribs down. We're gonna float that right leg up. Flex through the ankle, send it forward and back a couple times. Yeah, nice. Keeping the upper body as still as you can. Lower that right foot down. Lift the right arm overhead again, a little bit of a modified side plank. So you can do this modified with the knee down, or you can send the bottom leg, the left foot behind the right, so that you are up in a side plank. And then raise the body up towards the ceiling, side bend, and then lower the hips down, lower the right arm to the legs. Inhaling, lift the hips. Exhale to lower the hips. Nice, one more. And then drop to hands and knees. Do a little cat-cow spinal articulation. One bone at a time, with the core engaged, level out. Maybe rock side to side. Just see what you need after that. Feel leveled out a little bit. And then we'll come back on the hands and knees, getting ready for the opposite side. So right hand is down under the shoulder. Left leg is out. And you can let that hip open up, however that hip feels good. But you want the body in one long line here. Open up, stretch that left leg up, arm up. <laughs> Feel a little side stretch. And then left hand behind the head. Really push the back of the head into the hand. Float the left leg up. Flex through the ankle, send it forward and back. Nice. And then again here, we're going to lower that left leg. You can stay modified with the right knee down. You can send the right foot behind the left so that you're up in a side plank. And let's see, take the left arm to the ceiling if you can. And then lift the hips, stretch up and over, lower the hips, left hand comes down. As the hips lower, it comes up as you lift. One more. Drop the knees down, come to your hands and knees, cat cow it out. And then shift side to side a little bit, keeping the core engaged so you have a neutral spine. Just let your body shift left to right. Try that little bit of um, typewriter with the lower part of the body so it's shifting left to right without the upper part of the body. But it's not a bend where you're bringing hips closer to ribs. It's a shift. In theory, anyway, explore that. And then just let the belly drop, relax through the core. 
Relax through the pelvic floor. Let the head kind of hang, maybe even bring the chin to chest, really letting the head go. And just explore some releasing here for a few rounds of breath. So letting everything go. And shift the hips around a little bit if you feel like they need to move a little bit to let go a little more. Just keep feeling things release deeper and deeper with each exhale. So the belly's releasing further, the back. Just notice where you're carrying tension. It may take even five minutes if you were resting here that long to really fully feel like you're letting things go. Stretch back, find a child's pose, take a few breaths there. You can take the hands back by the hips if you like to fully let go into it. Take the knees as wide as you want here. Let the knees separate. Feel the belly and the pelvic floor release even more maybe. And rock the hips side to side. Start to bring the hands under the shoulders so that you can push yourself back up. We are all through.